Hi, did you know that your camera by default is probably throwing away 90% of the information if you're not keeping the original raw sensor details? Let's take a look at what I mean by that. So here I've got a piece of paper, some text on it. What I'm going to do is take a picture of the digital camera and load it into the computer. You can see now, transferred onto the computer here, that we've got two files one a JPEG and one the original RAW file. As you can see, the difference between the file sizes, the RAW is nearly 25 megabytes and the JPEG just two. If we click on them, you can see they look exactly the same on the screen. This is because all we're displaying is a thumbnail or preview of the file, which is embedded in the same into both pictures. And if we do our properties on the actual file, so we can see the file size and uh, dimensions of the image are exactly the same there. And they contain exactly the same metadata. So what's the big difference? So the first thing that may surprise you is your digital camera doesn't actually shoot in color. It shoots um, monochrome or grayscale and color is only achieved by the use of a Bayer filter. What's a Bayer filter? Well, let's take a look on the whiteboard. As you can see here on the board, we've actually got in the back of the camera is a sensor and each one of these pixels measures light. So to get color, they actually put this grid of filters, a bit like um, the older style 3D glasses where you'd have the red and the blue um, lenses, one for each eye. So a similar thing, but using three colors are placed across the various pixels. So what this enables the camera to do is shoot um, colour at the same time. Let's go to the computer and open up the file. Um, incidentally, I'll show you some software called Raw Therapy, which is completely open source you can use free to open and process raw files. So here on the computer, I've opened up uh, Raw Therapy. And what we can see is we've got the file up and if I actually change this, uh, what they call demosaicing, which is the process of uh, converting the file from this grid formation through to uh, a picture that we'd expect, you can see we get this uh, sensor pattern. Now, let me actually open up uh, this or a subsection of this that I've already processed in Photoshop, and I can show you in detail the different layers. So you can see here, if I zoom right in. If we get to a section of what would be the white paper, we can see we've got the full uh, fire pattern in the camera. Where we've actually got the red element, the blue, and the green. And you can see if I turn all elements off, we get nothing. If I turn just the blue on, we get the blue pattern. And cells or pixels within the, the file where the sensor is in two are completely black because no blue light is got through to these particular. Uh, uh, pixels within the camera. And again, when they're all on, we can see all of the data there. So, first consideration, the camera's processing this data and lots of decisions are being made on how to interpret that raw sensor information. And as you'll see, if you have a look at raw therapy, you bring this back, the demosaicing process has lots of different ways of actually uh, converting and they all have subtle differences, um, many of which won't show up on the screen if I was even to run through, but you can download from Raw Therapy. Um, if you want to Raw Therapy here, which is just rawtherapy.com and you'll see you could be able to download either Linux, Windows or Mac OS version or even the source code. For raw therapy and here you can then process the images and it's designed to be cross-platform raw photo processing system. Um, so coming back to this, the camera's line. The camera's actually taking the images and what's actually happening is the software and the processing of that file and then the display all the way through is actually chucking away information and making decisions for you. So my advice would be 
to always keep the raw files. So if you've got a picture, there would be a, uh, say a family event, something you might want to look back on in 10, 20 years time. Definitely keep the raw files if you can. Incidentally, if you're using an iPhone, by default, the Pro Roar is turned off. Um, I'll leave a link or show how to actually switch that on in another video. The benefit of keeping the raw file is time. At the moment, you're probably watching this video on an 8-bit display. What does that mean? That basically means you're only displaying uh, a value of up to uh, 256 for the red, 256 for the green, and 256 for the blue. That's the difference between the shades. So you go from zero light being completely black to one being completely white on each of those uh, variations. And between those two uh, variations, there's 256 graduations. Most digital cameras are 12 bit or even 14 bit. As such, you'll see, well, if we jump on the whiteboard, I'll show you. So here on the whiteboard, an 8-bit is 256, whereas 10-bit would be 1,024, uh, 1, or 12-bit, 4,096 graduations, and 14-bit, 16,384. What does that mean? For a file that's produced, each pixel would have an RGB value, and to get that, each one of those values would have a range from 0 to 16384 or 256, which basically means with an 8-bit file, which a JPEG is incidentally, you only get 256 times 256 times 256, which is 16.7 million colour variations. Whereas with a 14-bit file, you can actually get out to 68 trillion, I believe. So to crack that, with a 12-bit file, you can get 68 billion colors. And here, we can get 4.3 trillion colors. So the question is, why is this relevant? Well, if you consider now, most displays are 8-bit. We're just starting to get 10-bit displays. And in the future, I'm sure we will have 12 or even 14-bit displays. Maybe not for 10, 20 years' time. But when we do, having the information available will then allow for that to be properly displayed. And also, as this processing software begins to interpret the data more that the camera originally took, so over time, the software that's used to process these files with the use of artificial intelligence stuff, we have to analyze how the light falls on each sensor and each cell and improve the quality of the pictures, and digitally enhance them. And so the more information we've got available in 20 years time, the more we'll be able to do with that file. Whereas a JPEG is just merely a small section of that file. Hopefully you found that useful. If you want to learn more about uh, storage, management of files and photography. Hit the like and subscribe. Thank you.